Hi guys, it's Wade McMaster here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a contact form or some kind of form on your WordPress website using Ninja Forms. Now Ninja Forms is a plugin that's free. You can download it, install it, and you can basically custom build forms, add protection such as recapture, and um, get really powerful forms onto your website. And the other thing too is that they also have these extensions. So if you want to extend the form to other levels of functionality, they have premium extensions you can buy and add as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump on the computer and we're gonna get started and show you how to build a form. All right, let's get onto it. Okay, so we're logged into WordPress and uh, we basically need to be logged in to install the Ninja Forms plugin, which if you haven't done, simply head to plugins, add new, type in Ninja Forms, then click install now and activate. And now you'll actually notice a little Ninja Form section here on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click through to that. And I'm just gonna put not now for this. And we've got a like a little basic form sitting there ready to go. So what we can do, we can go and edit the form or we can start a new one. I generally work with the pre-existing form because it's just a little less work. If you ever want to, you can always click here and duplicate a form if you want to. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna click on this contact me text here and we're gonna go in and you'll see we've got a basic contact form already set up, but we're gonna add to it. So we've got name, email, and message. So what we can do is we can add this plus symbol here we get a series of options. So what do we want to add into this form? We're going to say add in, we've got some user information fields. Why don't we say, if you don't, you can put an address in there if you want to, but let's put a phone number in there. And there's a few other things. Maybe we'll put a, uh, just for the sake of the video, a checkbox. You can also put select radio list and you can see, you sort of get the idea, there's a few areas there, you put a number in there uh, if you want to as well, pop a number in there. And that'll be good enough for now. So now underneath our submit button, we have all of these fields. What I tend to do is I tend to, you can sort of drag these around in place, but uh, for now, I'm actually gonna grab the, grab the contact button and drag it down to the bottom. You see that green bar pop up, we release. And we've got our fields here. I'm also gonna grab the message and I'm gonna move that towards the bottom. Now your contact form doesn't have to be this detailed. I'm just showing you the options just in case you decide you want it to become detailed. Now, at the moment, our name, phone, and email are there. Phone is straightforward. We don't have to do anything with that. It's just a phone number. Name's there. Name is required, as you can see, as is the email. Checkbox list, we might wanna say I will just cut back for a second. I think I'm rushing ahead a little. If you want to change any of these fields, I click on name. Maybe I type in here full legal name or just full name as the label. And I can make it a required field or not. So under display, you can have a default value such as John Smith, which will actually be in the field. So you don't necessarily want that there, but if I remove it and say placeholder John Smith, you actually have that sitting in the background when they go to fill out the form. And the same works for the phone number. I can have it required or not. I call it phone or I can say phone number and I can have a placeholder 0400000000 if I want to. And you see we have these little placeholders in there. And you sort of get the idea itself. So checkbox, maybe I want them to be able to choose from a few different things. So let's say, uh, let's say we're a gym. We're gonna go, uh, what are you interested in? You might then say uh, strength, weight loss, maybe rehab or something like that. So if someone is actually interested in two of these things or one of these things, um, they can go through. Maybe we want to, because this is a checkbox, maybe we decide we want more options. So we're gonna add a new option here and say, other, and we're gonna make it a required field so they have to choose one. And then I click done. And now we've got down to select. So maybe we put uh, uh, which location do you wish to join? So let's say they have to choose a location. So we're gonna say Brisbane, I'm in, I'm in Australia, so I'm gonna use 
Australian cities such as Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. And of course, they have to choose one. So that's the difference also between a checkbox is like they can check multiple options. A drop down, they have to choose one. And it's the same with a radio list. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, we can say, uh, you have something else in there such as what time of day do you visit? This isn't necessarily what we'd actually have on a gym contact form, but let's just say morning before 11 a.m. Then we might have, say, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then we might say afternoon after 2 p.m. Just something like that. Just some options. They have to choose one, although we're going to leave it as a not required field. So if they choose, they don't want to. Now, number might be uh, number of days per week you'd like to train. And you can have a minimum of one and a maximum of seven. Or maybe you decide you don't want seven, you're only open six days a week, six. So that way you have to choose between those numbers. And then you have additional information here for a message. Now, any of this can be used creatively. Uh, you just gotta work out what suits best. You can just have phone, email, a message, or phone uh, name, phone number, email, a message. You don't necessarily need all these bits and pieces, but sometimes it's people like to have a little bit of extra information, such as what is your inquiry about, things like that. So you can go through and add these in if you want to pretty easily. So I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna publish that for now. And when we finish this form, there's actually a few extra steps I'm gonna add on the end, but we're just gonna sort of come across. So emails and actions. First things first, you wanna store the submission on your site. Sometimes uh, when you set up the contact forms, the emails don't necessarily get through. Um, there is, an, you can set up an email forwarder. Uh, I actually use the Send in Blue plugin. I sign up for Send in Blue, uh, and I s use their email forwarding plugin, and that helps to get past spam, even though it's not spam, to your own email. Now, email confirmation. If I click on this, this uses the field called email, which is the email field in the form. So if a user comes in and fills out that form and hits submit, then they will get an email sent to them as well as an email sent to you, which is the email notification. And you can have an all fields table. You can even add here where it's got email and I've clicked on this cog. I can change the email message to say something along the lines of, here is the information you submitted. And you can actually customize that and you can even add a reply address into, you can add your own reply address in there, so I'm like info at greaterimpact.com, even if it comes from a different address, so when they reply, it gets sent to there. And then there's some other advanced settings here, you can add an attachment if you want to, uh, but ultimately this is it. And like a lot of other text editors, you can choose to bold, italics, underline, you can remove the formatting, add dot points, add a link, Maybe you can say to our website, and if you want to, you can have a link to the website there. I'm not gonna worry about that. You can add tables and bits and pieces. Uh, so that's pretty good to go. You can customize the fields though. If you don't wanna just pop a one table there with all fields, I'm not gonna go into this necessarily, but you can put name, go to this drop down over here with the little points and lines, and you can choose name, and then you can put email is, and you can go in there one by one and add in all of the fields that you want. You can even add in other fields such as your WordPress username is. So if they have to be logged in to see the form for whatever reason, you can actually put in, uh, you know, user ID, username. You can have the post title. This can be handy too. If you want to know what page people are sending from, you can say sent from WordPress post URL. So not necessarily one you put in there for the person submitting the info, but you get the idea. Email confirmation, sent to the user, done. Email notification is essentially the same thing except it goes to the admin email, or you can actually declare an email. 
What you can do, uh, more advanced, you can go into developer mode and with any set of dot points, you can assign emails to certain values and choose that. If you do, let me know if you wanna see that in a video, leave a comment below how to customize the email depending on what options are actually picked in the Ninja Forms editor. But otherwise, we'll just stick with this for now. New message from, and then we've got field, full name, or you can say, field, full name has sent you a message. Or you can get rid of this tag altogether and just have website message or something. Now this here has got a little bit more sort of bits and pieces. I'm actually gonna remove that. I recommend going in here when you do your email confirmation and either typing it out the way you want to, like we were talking before, but I actually recommend going to other, sorry, to form and putting in an all fields table. That way you receive every bit of information in that table. And I'm going to click done. And you also have a success message here. So we click on that. Form was submitted successfully. Confirmation email hasn't sent to. Sometimes I've removed the email confirmation for clients and I've just removed this and added something like, we will get back to you shortly or ASAP or something like that. So you can customize that message that pops up on the screen after they've submitted the form. So for now, that's pretty much it. There's other settings here, display settings under advanced display settings, the form title. You can choose not to display the form title, but you can have something like send us a message clear successfully completed form. You can do that, hide the form, yep. So we can actually hide, have the form pop up new as opposed to just disappearing. Or we can leave the info in the form if they want to submit again. And there's other bits and pieces here. I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, you can have the, the labels in different element, different areas. I would just leave that generally where it is. But play with that if you want to. Uh, once again, publish. And I'm going to X out of there. So my form is now ready to go. It's being sent to my email and I have this short code here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy that short code and I'm gonna add a new page. You can go new and then page. Or you can go to pages on the left, add new, however you choose to add your pages. I'm gonna say contact form. Since this is a test site, it won't matter what I do. Now, there's two things I can do here. I can hit plus. I can actually put a ninja form in and select the form. But I have had issues with this in the past. So instead I choose to go short code and just paste the short code in. Whatever you prefer, try it out. Let's go publish. So we've created a new page, put the short code on our, a short code on our page and we're gonna view that page now. And you see we now have a contact form. There's a placeholder in there, John Smith. I'm gonna change that over to uh, use my email address. So Wade McMaster, this is my phone number, which is currently blurred out. So I'm just going to uh, put a bunch of zeros in there. My email, interested in weight loss and strength. I want to train in Melbourne. I don't wanna choose this. I wanna train three days a week. Additional information. I would probably recommend, since there's a red star here, going back and uh, removing that depending on whether you need them to type a message or not. If you don't have a bunch of these forms up here, obviously you want some information, so I would probably make that, leave that as required. So I might say, hi, I need info and submit. And you can see here it says form submitted successfully, we'll go back to you ASAP. Now I'll check my email in a moment, but first I'm actually gonna go back to my dashboard into Ninja Forms and Submissions and click that. And you see if I select a form and go to send us a message, I can filter. And there's my message right there, my phone number, email, preferences. Not everything is here. If you go into edit, underneath that entry, you'll see all the information I've submitted there. So if something goes wrong and you don't receive your email, it's sitting right there for you to check on your website. So I'll just check my email, pop that up in a sec. So it has marked it as spam. Uh, it's actually been forwarded from one email to another. So um, it's, it's a little bit iffy, but you get the idea. It's got 
all my information here, full name, phone number, email, what I'm interested in, locations, what time of the day do you visit. I didn't enter any information, so it's blank. So you can see all the information we need is right there. And uh, it's uh, just, it's, it's a handy bit of software, very easy to use. Now, one thing you can do is also just whitelist it. If you do find that your emails are going to your spam or junk folder, depending on what you're, what you're using, you can set up a filter. So on Gmail, you can set up filter messages like these and uh, you know, whoever the email's from, you can create a filter and just uh, you know, never send it to spam. You can even do things such as you know, uh, star it, uh, mark with them as important and that sort of thing and create a filter. So that's an option if you find these going to spam. But there is another issue I wanna to touch on on the website itself. So the other thing is when I set up this form, there's no spam protection. Straight out of the box, there's nothing to stop uh, bots from filling out this form because you might set it up, it'll go fine for a little while and in a few weeks you'll start getting a whole bunch of spam emails. So the way we fix that, we go into test site here, so back into the dashboard, down to ninja forms, into settings. Now you can scroll down and you'll see you've got where well, you can re enter your recapture information. You can choose recapture three or recapture two. Um, I generally use cap recapture two with the little I'm not a robot tick box. I've personally found it to be less annoying, <laughs> but uh, play around with whatever you like. But the way it works is you do click on this little link here and it will open in a new tab. And we head into the V3 admin console and we've still got a few bits and pieces here already, but I'm going to just get rid of that. I'm going to click the add button here to create and I'm going to type in my domain right there. And then I'm just going to copy that domain, the same domain that the website's on. I'm going to go version two. I'm going to choose the I'm not a robot checkbox. You can choose invisible or you can just go version three. Um, and these options you'll have to repeat in the form, but I'll show you that in a minute paste the domain in there, I accept terms of service, and I turn off send alert to owners, and I submit. Now what I do is I take these this site key, copy, and I paste, and I take the secret key, copy and paste, and the language here is English, so I put in EN for English. I then scroll down and save those settings, and that's all you need to get the settings in there. That's how you get those keys for your website. I now go back into Ninja Forms dashboard and I open up my form and I add in the recapture here. So I scroll down until I find recapture and it will add it at the bottom. But it will, if I move it just up for a second, it will actually have the label there, recapture. So I'm just going to say, you can say prove you are not a bot, or what I usually do, I just delete it. Now visible means you've got the tick box, invisible means you have you don't have the tick box, but you do have to have that declared on the previous setting too. So since we chose the visible tick box, we have to choose visible. So I'm just gonna click done and publish. So now if I go back to our page, I've just refreshed, scroll down. I now have the tick box here and I can submit the form. So that will stop bots from sending a lot of form uh, information through your form that you don't want. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it. That's the basics of creating a somewhat basic form in Ninja Forms. Uh, it's a very straightforward process. Now, if you have any questions, I do have a lot of different um, I have a lot of experience with this form software, but not it's not infinite. If you have any questions about anything you're not sure how to do, anything specific, let me know. I'll tell you whether I uh, can or can't do it. Uh, maybe make a video to help you through it. But um, yeah, otherwise, if you like the video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing if you'd like to see more. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I hope you had a great day and I'll speak to you again next time. See ya.